Hello, good day. I'm State Game Warden Salvador Zafuda of the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to become a State Game Warden, as well as some of the things that we do in our day-to-day -day job. And we're going to wrap it up with a few other career choices within our agency to make you guys well aware. I'm in charge of the Northern Blair County District, including El Tuna, and I have two other wardens here that's going to be talking to you here today, and they are as well from Blair County, and they'll give a little bit about them when they get up here. Uh, the first warden up here that's going to come and speak is going to be Officer College. He's going to go over how you become a state game warden and what you need to apply. Good afternoon or morning, depends what time of day you're watching this. Um, my name is Mike College. I'm the game warden in Southern Blair and part of Huntington County. Uh, I'm basically just going to discuss with you how you get to uh, become a state game warden in Pennsylvania. So it all starts out with a couple of qualifications you have to meet before you can even apply. Firstly, you have to be 21 years of age in Pennsylvania to become a state game warden. You could be 20 when you, when you apply, but by the appointment date of the academy, you have already had to uh, become 21 years of age. You are now required to have 60 college credits, so that's essentially two years of college. Now, there's no specific uh, degree that we require. However, there's a few that will tremendously help you. So if you have a bio biology degree, for example, it's going to help you in the biological side of things. Now, if you do have a degree in criminal justice, it's going to help you on the obvious criminal justice side of things. However, our academy is so diverse that it really doesn't matter what those credits are in. If you're into sewing and you feel like getting 60 credits in sewing, that's all right. You'll, you'll still meet that qualification. Otherwise, you could have two or more years at a minimum uh, and 400 service hours as a commission deputy with the agency. Now, a deputy is uh, very similar to a game warden. The real difference between that is they are a part-time volunteer kind of service, meaning there's a small amount of money associated with that position. However, it's not enough to sustain, uh, to purchase a house or to live your daily life. So uh, that is one way to meet the requirements. There's no prior requirements to become a deputy, except for the age of 21. You could also have four years of active duty military. So um, that's not, uh, there's no, no exceptions to that, a minimum of four years. Or two years of service with a uh, wildlife agency. So it doesn't have to be obviously be Pennsylvania, it could be Maryland, uh, Florida, Texas, it, it doesn't really uh, matter. Now, once you have met all of those requirements or the minimum requirements, okay, uh, you need to take a civil service test. Civil service test is where you go to a civil service building. Could be, you know, each uh, area kind of has their own. And you would sit in front of a computer and take a test that has a variety of questions on it. There could be math, reading comprehension, um, you, where you have to read something and recall, those types of things. Once you get past that, you have a taped oral interview. Now, a taped oral interview, is it's kind of awkward, but they're trying to see how you communicate with an individual. So they make they'll play play like a, a video for you, then they'll pause that video and you need to respond. After your response, they will then play another portion of the video. And that next portion may have nothing to do with what you just mentioned. Okay, your response to the previous segment but they just want to see how you respond to that next segment. It's basically how you communicate with people. Once you get those two things completed, they add up uh, your points and come up with a score. If you meet the minimum score, which sometimes varies through the Civil Service Commission, you will then move forward to the next step, which would be your background check. Background check consists of full-time work, typically a supervisor who will come to your residence, speak with you, regarding uh, the packet of information you filled out. They'll speak with your spouse, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whichever it may be, as well as some neighbors, past employers, uh, as well as some folks that uh, they may recommend for you to speak with. Moving forward beyond that, you'll have oral boards. So the oral boards would be where you would sit down in front of 
folks that are in charge of different divisions in the agency. So there might be some regional directors, chiefs of different divisions, and there are specific set of questions that every individual will get, and they will have they will read that question to you, see what your response is. Based off of your response, you may have additional follow-up questions. It depends on, once again, how you answer those questions. Once you get past that stage, you go to a physical exam, uh, I'm sorry, a psychological exam. The psychological exam is essentially you sit in front of a certified psychologist, therapist, they ask you a few questions, and then you take a test. The test has several hundred questions on it, and ultimately, there are questions they ask you the same thing multiple times in different sort of scenarios. They want to see how you respond to that. There's no right or wrong answer, but at the end of it, there is a formula, some way they review all of that and comes up with some sort of score to be sure that mentally, psychologically, you can perform this job. And lastly, you have a physical test. Now that physical test is consisting of a run, which is a mile and a half, <clears throat> excuse me, an Illinois run, which is basically you've got to run uh, back and forth a couple of times within a, in a allotted amount of time, a sit and reach, a jump, which is where they will measure your distance from your, the top part portion of your hand with your arm raised to a, a set number, and you have to jump up and, and touch a marker. You will have a swim, which if I recall is approximately uh, 100 meters and then tread water for, I believe it's five to 10 minutes, okay? Um, after that, oh, and you do have a 300 meter run. All of these are timed and there's minimum standards. There's 30 push-ups and 30 sit-ups as well that you have to complete. Okay, after you get through all of those steps and after the agency reviews uh, the interview, the background, your sight test, your physical agility, make sure that you've passed all of those things, you would then, uh, if they choose you, be selected for appointment to the academy. Now. One thing about our academy, the Ross Luffler School of Conservation, which is located on Elmerton Ave in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, is it is the first school to train conservation officers in the world. It's specific to uh, conservation law enforcement. Uh, we teach nothing else there, okay? And approximately only 700 officers have graduated from this academy since the inception of the agency. Once you make it to the academy, they will, uh, the, the academy runs from anywhere between 44 and 51 weeks. Now, I know that seems kind of strange, but it depends on the trainings, schedules, and everything else. They, they try to fit it in in under a year. Now, during that time, you're in the academy approximately 30 weeks. Then you'll go out to a field training uh, assignment where you're in three different districts, three and a half weeks, two and a half weeks, and three and a half weeks. That's where you go and do the job and they grade you on that. And then you come back to the academy for the remainder of your stay there and eventually get to the point, if you make it, to graduate. Prior to graduation, approximately a month out, they will assign you to a district that you will report to once coming, once you re, uh, graduate the academy. You were required to live within that district and find housing in that district. Whether that's an apartment, a house, it doesn't really matter. But you establish your office there and uh, you, though you don't have business come from your residence, that is where you do all of your paperwork. That's where you get ready in the morning. That's where your vehicle's at because you have a take-home vehicle. Once again, after you graduate and you're assigned to your district, uh, that's when your career begins. So with that, uh, the next individual that you're gonna be speaking with is Warden Brandon Feaster, and uh, he's gonna go into some of the daily uh, things that we deal with in this job. Hi, I'm Warden Feaster with Pennsylvania Game Commission. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit today about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So generally a day for me would start, I get up in the morning, I'll get my patrol truck ready to go, meaning I'll put my go bag in there that has all the materials I need for the day, forms, my PBT, investigative equipment. I'll go out on patrol. Now a normal day could start out possibly trapping bears, dealing with small animal complaints. 
all the way up to arresting somebody and taking them to jail. So to break that down, we process bears on a yearly basis. We have quotas that we have to meet on so many bears we have to track. And what that allows us to do as wardens is to be able to determine how many bears we're going to harvest that year within any given year and how many bears we have in the population. Once we do that, and that might not be every day, that's some days, going into the next thing you might run into might be somebody you have to arrest for a poaching violation, somebody that's unlawfully taking game and wildlife. Or you might possibly run into somebody that's going down the road and they might be under the influence of drugs and alcohol, and you might have to arrest them. We're a general enforcement agency and we cover all laws within the Commonwealth, anywhere from those vehicle infractions for a DUI, all the way up to poaching incidents, cruelty to animals. We handle all those fishing incidents, all those type of things. That's a lot of what we do based on a day-to-day -day basis. You see by what I just described, we have a very diverse job, and that's one of the intriguing things that allured me to this position. It's been a very fulfilling career, and I think it's something that you would enjoy. The next person we're gonna have coming up is Officer Cifudo. Hello, I'm back with you here. I'm just gonna discuss some other career opportunities within the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Uh, one of the big things uh, we can hit on is Deputy Wildlife Conservation Officer. They're more considered a volunteer. Now they do get paid slightly for their time and they can enforce most laws within this Commonwealth, with, but there's a little stipulation in that what they can and can't do. Next up, one of the other careers in our agency is biologists. Obviously, they deal with, uh, with wild, wildlife, with diseases, any type of uh, action plan, anything with wildlife in their biology, they deal with. Uh, something else to think about, we have a food and cover crew. They're responsible for maintaining uh, the game lands and making sure changing habitat, uh, they're painting boundary lines, they're releasing pheasants, anything that has to do with our game lands and any maintenance, they deal with it. Uh, we also have dispatchers within our agency and they're responsible for communications, getting us the information as officers when we have the general public call in. So they're basically that step between us and the public uh, to take these calls for us because we can get busy, especially during the hunting season time of year. Some other positions we have within our agency to think about, we have foresters, they're in charge of obviously the trees uh, with different cells and they actually help us out as game wardens a good bit if we have some type of timber theft and damage the trees. We have GIS technicians, if you like mapping and things of that sort, that's what those guys are there for. We have clerical staff, uh, they're in charge of the day-to-day -day, the paperwork. We have different maintenance positions at each one of our regional office, including Harrisburg. They're in charge of our vehicle and our equipment. We have photographers, videographers within the agency. Uh, we have IT tech support. We have positions in our warehouse staff in Harrisburg. We have radio maintenance personnel. And we have, if you guys are familiar with the game news, we have writers and editors. And that's our primary responsibility is doing the, the game news. Uh, as well as there are some different type of aid positions there. We have bio aids that assist. We have some forest aids and they assist the biologists and the foresters to help them do their job. Now, to find out more information on our career, you can go to our website at www.pgc.state.pa.us. You can go on our social media pages, such as Facebook. We have a page on there and they're constantly releasing stuff that we're doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as well as future career opportunities. And the State Civil Service website is another website you'll have to look out for uh, when it comes time to apply to take the test. On behalf of Officer College and Officer Feaster and myself, we want to wish you guys the best future and good luck with your, your future and your job opportunities in the near future.